In just a few minutes, we're going to show you a few secrets about the Bourne's Model 82 Vintage Guitar Pot and how it can rock your world. Let's do it, Jerry! Bourne's Guitar Potentiometers, Take 1001. Hi, this is Jim Lawson for Bourne's Pro Audio. We're here in our headquarters in Riverside, California with Guitar Potentiometer Guru Extraordinaire. Chuck Manzano. How are you today, Chuck? I'm really good. <clears throat> hey, Stan, can I get some water? Uh, it's Steve. Whatever. Cut. So, what would you say are some of the attributes that separate um, high-end guitar pots, such as the Bourne's Model 95, the Bourne's Model 82 Vintage, from standard carbon element pots? Well, there are several characteristics that, that uh, separate the high-end potentiometers from the low-end potentiometers. Um, we can start with the with the resistive inks. There's there's several types of resistive inks. Carbon ink based potentiometers have a resistive ink that is sprayed onto the element, and then it's run through a kiln. Whereas, on the high end potentiometers, we have a Bourne's conductive polymer ink that is silk screened on, and it's considered a thick film type uh, resistor. Uh, this formulation is fired in a kiln at very very high temperatures and it produces a very hard surface, which is a long-wearing surface, where you'll get uh, 100,000 cycles or more of, of use out of this potentiometer, whereas the carbon element will only provide 20 to 30,000 cycles maximum. So we know that guitarists play in all sorts of environments, indoors, outdoors. It, it, does the element type have an, any effect on that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Model 95 premium guitar potentiometer and Model 82 vintage guitar potentiometer contain conductive polymer inks which are much more stable in changing environments. In fact, they also have a seal that, that protects them from any kind of water or moisture or uh, dust ingression. So we all know that dust is a major contributor to noise in the output of a potentiometer. So what other factors might contribute to noise or perhaps a better question is what factors in the design of the potentiometer can affect noise in the output? Well, Jerry, the major factors are in the design itself. It's Jim. Whatever. <laughs> this is Jerry. There's this an uncanny resemblance. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> the wiper design actually does contribute to the noise factor in the output of the potentiometer. There are several different types of designs. We have stamp contact designs and we have spring designs. The stamp contact design uh, can have a single finger or it can have multiple fingers, such as this one here has four fingers on it. The spring contact design has many fingers on it and actually provides maximum surface contact to the element. These two types of designs with the stamp contact are normally used in carbon potentiometers. While this one here is only used on a high-end potentiometer, our Model 95 and Model 82s have a multi-finger wiper design. So a wiper and element design is really similar to dragging a shovel across an asphalt pavement. So if you have a solid contact, you're not making maximum contact with the surface. Whereas with multiple springs, the springs are flexing and you're getting maximum surface contact to your element. Interesting. This combination of element and wiper design is highly reliable and it's been in use for many, many years. In fact, this Model 82s and, and Model 90s were developed for the avionics and military applications. So the, the reliability with these products is very, very good. Let's talk a little bit more about noise and the output of the potentiometer. A lot of folks uh, think that uh, a noisy pot means a duster. Uh, dirt has entered the pot, and that's not always the case. Uh, the lubricants, um, some lubricants have a tendency to crystallize over time when they're left out to the open environment, and that crystallization process, you know, starts to break up and, and it causes debris and it migrates throughout the element, so you get, uh, in effect, you get noise in the output. So that's, that's another important reason to have a good seal on a pot uh, to, to protect the, the lubricant from the environment. We'll talk a little bit more about lubricants later. That concludes part one of our discussion on standard guitar pots versus high-end guitar pots. Be sure to check out parts two and three. <laughs>
Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between standard and high-end guitar potentiometers. Is that okay with you, Chuck? You know what? It's hot in here. Can we turn down the air conditioner? Okay. <laughs>